Welcome back to the report. The subject of the caliphate has been contentious for both Muslims and non-Muslims. Ever since it was declared back in June by the Islamic State, many Muslims across the globe have denounced the state. But conversation around the caliphate and what it means has continued. Reporter Yasmin Katoun has been following the story. Behind me here, British Muslims have come to discuss ideas around the concept of a caliphate. The people here don't accept the declaration by Islamic State in Iraq and Syria, but the question is, why? This conference was organized by global political party Hizb tahrir The group were one of the first to come out and reject the declaration made in June. As a group which has been calling for an Islamic State for over 60 years, this came as a surprise to many. Speaking to the British media representative for Hizb tahrir he says their stance is clear. Suddenly that within your group that you announced that the emir of your group is the Khalifa for the Muslims and you demand bay'ah, this is not the Khilafa. Uh, it's well known, this is, was very clear to many Muslims across the world, um, and that's why our position likewise is very clear, and we and all Muslims need to keep working and yearning for the real Khilafa. Many have rejected the caliphate established by Islamic State on the basis that it doesn't meet Sharia conditions and is seen as extreme. It's not the Khilafa. They do not um, manifest what is the Khilafa. A man who controls the whole territory. We find that in Iraq, ISIS is fighting. Um, in, in Syria, ISIS is fighting with many of the groups opposed to Assad, and that raises many questions in itself. And in Iraq, ISIS is in alliance with the tribes, did not take Bayer from the people of the region who really control power. Around 800 people turned up to the second of three national conferences on the topic, and people from all over Europe came out to find out more about the concept. Where the society is now, it's like disgusting the things that you see, so much fitna everywhere and it's important to work um, towards Khilafah and um, it's a further upon us to walk towards it as well. Being young and stuff, you see how much pressure there is in terms of like fashion, um, music, all the industries out there and you see that kind of like you're training yourself to live like a kind of typical life of going to college then going to university and living your life based around money. and. It's all capitalism and, you know, you kind of want to live your life more, more for the sake of Allah. Passers-by in the local area reiterated the same sentiment we heard at the conference. I think um, being an Islamic state and establish, establishing an Islamic state is uh, followed upon every Muslim. And we must always um, work together to unite and build an Islamic empire or Islamic world and live under the Sharia. But to be honest, the things that I'm saying in ISIS, from ISIS, I don't think that's exactly how Islam is portrayed. I mean, I don't think we're there to conquer someone. We're there to give dawah and spread Islam through peaceful means. Any group can come along and say, this is the caliphate, this is the Khilafah Rashid that we were looking for. But in reality, when the Khilafah is established, the West would not be sitting around and watching. We know straight away they'll be attacking at every single port, every single possible spot of the Islamic State they will attack. They were trying to get embargoes, etc., etc., etc. So what ISIS has declared as the caliphate is far from what a caliphate is. With hundreds of people turning out in London to discuss the topic, my feeling is that however much it's tainted, it's still a firm desire in many hearts. Yasmin Khatun, The Report, Islam Channel. In the studio to discuss this is Abdul and Andalusia, who's uh, founder of the Muslim Debate Initiative. And on the phone, we're joined by Sheikh Hatim Al Haddad, an Islamic scholar and activist. Um, welcome to you both. Um, Abdul, um, there couldn't be a worse advert for a caliphate than ISIS, could there? Or, or do you think that the, their existence has provoked debate about the issue? Well, I think that perhaps prior to um, ISIS's self proclamation, uh, some Muslims probably thought that a caliphate was like King Arthur and Camelot. It was a fantasy. It would be brought in the end times. But I suppose now, because there's a lot of debate around ISIS's um, proclamation and why or why not it is a caliphate, um, Muslims have now realized just how re uh, realistic a caliphate can be. And, and so much so now that we're actually having a debate about ISIS, whether it's a caliphate or not. Mm. Sheikh, but I mean, if, that, if, this is, uh, if this is reality, people may wish that it's long delayed. Yeah, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Um, we have to be careful here because um, Islamic Caliphate um, is an Islamic obligation, generally speaking. 
And uh, there are certain conditions where the Islamic Caliphate can be established. Um, not any claim for Islamic Caliphate is, does really represent uh, the real Islamic Caliphate. So uh, we have to hold a neutral position and an Islamic position. Uh, the absurd and the anti-Islamic uh, activities carried out by the ISIS should not put us off of the concept of the Islamic Caliphate. Islamic Caliphate is an Islamic obligation. Uh, establishing a Caliphate uh, will, uh, uh, will be helpful even for non-Muslims to understand what does Islam all about. It will help non-Muslims to speak to Muslims, there will be one representative for the Ummah, and the various non-Muslim countries will be able to communicate with all Muslim groups. Even the Islamic Caliphate will be able to control uh, Muslim groups from doing harmful things for the uh, non-Muslims, not like the situation now uh, done by the so-called Islamic Caliphate in Iraq and, and uh, Sham. Uh, so we have to be careful and hold the Islamic position, which is a moderate position and a neutral position. Yeah. Sheikh, what, what would be the, the conditions? If this is an illegitimate caliphate, what would be the conditions for a legitimate uh, caliphate? And I think the question that many people will ask is, um, and where does political consent come into this? This would be a question asked of any political project from the far left to the far right. Where do we get our say? Yeah, yeah. This is a very good question. Okay. First of all, let us understand what does caliphate mean, the word caliphate. Khilafa means representation, okay? Or either uh, uh, one of its political meaning is representation, or the main meaning for it is representation. So, the word khilafa should, by its uh, essence, should represent the vast majority of Muslims. Because the Khalifa, or the Caliphate, he is the representative of the vast majority of Muslims. Which means that the vast majority of Muslims have given him the authority to represent him, uh, to represent them. Okay, Sheikh, that, that's very clear. Just let me put some of those points to Abdul in the, in the, in the studio. So, I mean, there's a, there's a very clear drive there from what the Sheikh's saying, that consent... And democracy in, in, in ordinary terms uh, is central here to a caliphate. Do you agree with that? Um, it requires the consent of the, of the Muslims to appoint a caliphate because the obligation stems from them. They transfer the authority uh, to this one individual of whom they form a contract of ruling with. Uh, but unlike democracy, the people's um, whims or desires are not the basis or, or the sovereign of the, of the government. It is the, the, the law of Islam, the, the law of God, and the caliph is really just an executor. So he just executes the law of God to the best interpretation possible. Obviously, he's, inf he's not infallible. There is difference of opinion, and he can be challenged on, about what he does. So, and how does that happen? That's the question most people can ask. Okay, this is interpreted. Fair enough. Who, who decides whether it's interpreted rightly or wrongly? Well, um, the great thing about um, Islam is, is no one owns Islam. It's kind of open, uh, open source code for everyone to kind of look, in, look and debate. So scholars have historically counted caliphs. Judges have ca in, in courts have, have counted the caliphs. Even the, the supreme judge or the, the judge of, uh, of uh, the constitutional judge, if you want to call it that, the Mahkam uh, al al um And they've been impeached and removed from power. Sultan, Turkish caliphs have been removed from power uh, due to a perception that they were going against Islam. Okay. Sheikh, how has this conversation, uh, this discussion around the Caliphate, how has it been altered by, by uh, the Islamic State's declaration? Uh, you mean the, the, this current ISIS? Yes, indeed, yeah. Yeah. Uh, first of all, um, ISIS have not consulted the vast majority of scholars all over the world yeah, to, to claim uh, the Caliphate over the uh, Muslim Ummah. This is one thing. Uh, the other thing, if we say that if they want to claim that they have an Islamic state, they should differentiate between an Islamic state as a state, okay, uh, not a caliphate as a state. And here we have to distinguish between an Islamic state and the caliphate. The caliphate represents the vast majority of the ummah. It is one caliphate. The Islamic state now we have Brunei is an Islamic state. We have some other Muslim countries 
they have they implement uh, maybe 60, 70. They differ in terms of their implementation of Islam within their country. So if they were to claim that they are an Islamic state, would, this would have been accepted from that perspective only. Yeah. Oh, okay. Good. Good point. Let me. Um, I mean, th 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 that's an important <coughs> distinction, isn't it? Because you know, Iran, others are said to be Islamic states or claim to be Islamic states, but they don't claim to be the Islamic state for all Muslims. It's an important distinction. Uh, yes. Well, first and foremost, a lot of countries which claim uh, to be Islamic are, are not Islamic. They've mixed, mixed some um, secular democratic laws uh, with an Islamic laws, or they. Uh, uh, they have a modernist interpretation of Islam which they implement, so they're not necessarily Islamic states. However, even if ISIS were, was an Islamic state, or was a state, as in one that could provide security for its own members, currently I don't think it can. I don't think Abu Bakr Baghdadi can give a public speech without fear of being drone, a drone attack hitting him, so not so much of a caliph if he can't protect his, himself, let alone his people. But here's the key issue. Um, if we look historically, the Ottomans, uh, the Ottoman uh, uh, Sultanate, and it was a Sultanate, uh, they were conquering Europe, conquered Constantinople, controlled Syria, fighting the, 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 the Persians, uh, took, conquered Iraq, and they still didn't declare themselves a caliphate until they took Egypt. Because then they could claim that they were the, the biggest shield, or, the, or the, they were controlling the most strategic areas of the Muslim world, and hence they could provide the protection for, mo for the biggest portion, or the, or the main centers of power for the Muslim world. So. If anyone wants to call themselves, declare themselves a caliphate, they have to have those credentials. And the Ottomans had to you know, wait a couple hundred years before they were ready to declare themselves the caliph of, of, the, of the Muslims. So that even if ISIS are implementing Islam, and even if they are a state, they cannot claim themselves to be a caliphate any more than um, Hamas could claim themselves to be a caliphate, or the Taliban could, and which themselves did not claim to be a caliphate. Uh, and so on. So you can't just say I'm the, I'm the caliphate and yet you only control a small fringe area or a small p p part of the Muslim world and even that n not really you control it properly or, or, or securely. So really you have to look at the historical precedence for this. You can't just say Islamic State now I'm a caliphate. No, uh, the, or the situation in the Muslim world is that we're spread out, we've got um, different centers of power. Just let me ask you one final question. That, that conference, it was uh, organized by Hizbut Tahir. They're seen as quite a marginal group uh, within, even within the Muslim community. Is this a debate which is now much wider than them and across the whole of the Muslim community? Um, I mean, I, I, I don't know if, if uh, I don't think his particular are marginal within the Muslim community, but what I would say is that the concept of caliphate is not owned by them. The concept of caliphate is owned by all Muslims. It is prescribed by the Prophet Muhammad. Uh, he, he prescribed this, uh, and it's an obligation upon all Muslims. And I think that the debate about the necessity of the, of the caliphate, or rather you should say the debate about how we implement uh, the caliphate and how we, we the path towards it is certainly a conversation that's spreading around the Muslim world and it's extremely vital it does so because we need to see the realization of these things because so much of our problems are rooted in the absence and started from the absence of a caliphate. Okay, thanks very much. Well, I'm afraid that's all we've got time for on tonight's program. I want to thank all my guests and of course you at home for watching. Remember, you can keep up with our Twitter conversation on all of tonight's stories by tweeting at Islam Channel and using the hashtag The Report.